clairvoyance of being press is limited, and so we rely on press releases. Except for this first story, which isn't a press release, but it's, it's a story that, well, uh, it's, it's one we have to talk about. And that's the story around David Cage. David Cage is the mastermind behind games like Fahrenheit, Heavy Rain, and the up-and-coming Detroit Become Human. Multiple French outlets, including the very reputable Le Mans, have released stories saying of inappropriate conduct that is being done at Quantic Dream with David Cage either being complicit or simply being blind to letting it happen. Within this story, there are two points to very much focus on, but it's two points that interlink but are themselves separate. On the first side of things, there's allegations that David Cage is very hard to work with within Quantic Dream. I'm not really surprised by that. To me, David Cage has always seemed like he has what I would call a Kubrick mentality, referencing Stanley Kubrick, film director. It's someone who is an auteur, someone who is very particular, which means everything must be done his way, and it's kind of an authoritarian workplace. So, allegations that he's hard to work with, I'm not necessarily surprised. But that in itself doesn't necessarily negate a negative workplace atmosphere. New employees have to know and understand the kind of workplace they're going into, and if they find it too stressful, they are free to complain. The second part of the story is something that runs in parallel to the first, that is somewhat connected while also not being connected, and that is the allegations of inappropriate behaviour. Inappropriate behaviour can foster itself in a hostile workplace, with it being hostile, people doing other negative things that may be significantly worse can often end up appearing. And that is something that, according to these allegations, has happened. Quantic Dream did release a response to these allegations saying, Articles published today level various allegations against Quantic Dream, its management and employees. We categorically deny all of these allegations. Quantic Dream filed a complaint several months ago and further complaints will follow. We invite interested parties to read the responses of our employee representatives and health and security committee to questions submitted by the journalists prior to publication. Inappropriate conduct or practices have no place at Quantic Dream. We have taken and always will take such grievances very seriously. We value every single person who works at Quantic Dream. It is of the utmost importance to us that we maintain a safe environment that allows us to channel our shared passion for making video games. And so, as it usually goes with the allegations, comes the refute. And also, just like some of the other news stories that go around at the moment, they will remain as allegations until the investigation is either conducted or completed. David Cage also responded, and his response was not very good. His response included him saying, You want to talk about homophobia? I work with Ellen Page, who fights for LGBT rights. You want to talk about racism? I work with Jesse Williams, who fights for civil rights in the USA. Judge me by my work. Ellen Page played the lead role in one of his previous games, Beyond Two Souls. Jesse Williams is playing one of the significant characters in Detroit Become Human. He was the lead part of the E3 trailer, most previous E3. And to that response, I say, no, what your work is and what it represents can be significantly different from the author. The example I always go to is H.P. Lovecraft. I'm a lover of his work, but, spoiler alert, he's a bit racist. But that doesn't deter me from loving his work. I don't necessarily love the author, but I still like his work. So I understand what David Cage was aiming for. It still doesn't paint you Mr. Cage, in a very good light. We know your work is going to be your legacy, but you can still be remembered as someone who acts inappropriately to other people. Even a few moments ago, I said that you, Mr. Cage, have a Kubrick mentality. Stanley Kubrick is not necessarily well remembered by people who work for him. Just look up some of the stories around the lead actress of The Shining. You can be an auteur and you can be hard to work with, but that does not negate you doing bad things. You're still doing bad things. From there, the tone changes completely as you move on to talking about Nintendo. And the Nintendo Direct this week had significant announcements with many new re-releases coming for the Switch and new games. The list includes Dark Souls Remastered, Mario Tennis Aces, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, 
Kirby Star Allies, The World Ends With You Final Remix, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, SNK Heroes Tag Team Frenzy, Wise 7 Lacrimosa of Dina, Payday 2, Fee, Celeste, with DLC for Super Mario Odyssey, Mario and Rabid's Kingdom Battle, and the Pokémon Tournament DX Battle Pack. Nintendo really is coming to its own with the Switch, and if the sales numbers are to be believed, the Switch is selling extraordinarily well. They have already outsold the Wii U, with many Nintendo games appearing on Game of the Year lists or Top 10 Games of the Year lists. It certainly shows that they have really refound their development legs. But from there, there really isn't that much to talk about. Nintendo has announced some games, and these games are coming out at their respective dates. There's not much else to say, but well done, Nintendo. The Switch is going very well for you. The next story we have is about Gamescom. As with last year, they have announced their wildcard lottery raffle thing. A wildcard ticket is a special ticket that is for one, a guaranteed ticket, and for two, you get to go in on the industry day as well. Not to the press industry area, but the significant chunk, the big portion of Gamescom that's by the North Center, that part is open, and you get to go in with all the other special people as well who bought a very expensive ticket. <laughs> all you have to do to get into the draw is just subscribe to their private visitor newsletter, which you can do on their website, and that's it. It's all the luck of the draw, really. But if you want to have a chance to get it, you have to subscribe to the newsletter very, very soon, as the cutoff point is the 25th of January. You have 10 days. And to end, here's a very quick news story around the game Vampire. I will keep calling it Vampire, even though I know it's called Vampire, it's because they're using the Vampire spelling. The publisher of the game, Focus Home Interactive, and the game's developer, Don't Nod, are releasing a five part making of series that talks about the making of the game. I, for one, am one of the people who is very much looking forward to Vampire. I've had a few looksies at it, not touchy touchies, but looksies at it, and I very much like it. It seems very, very, very fun. So, if you're interested, they're doing a making of series. So, that's something to watch. That is it for the news this week, but before we go, here is the UK All Formats charts, again, graciously supplied by UKIE Limited. Not much has changed, really, except, well, you cannot kill the GTA 5, who have now gone from third to first. From there, not much change from last week. If there's a thing about it, it's on the list. A lot of Nintendo stuff, because Nintendo's doing very good. And to ultimately end, here are the games that are going to be released this week. The list may seem quite long, but if you actually read it, there's a lot of multi-platform releases. And that is it for today. If you found this video informative, please do consider subscribing and sharing the video around. And I will see you next week for the next Press Rush.